Good morning. God blesses me. The nature Thomas with keeping it real, GBP. God before a business, before a pleasure. Real talk. And we're just going to be talking about the Father. When I come back on uh, Monday, we'll be in Isaiah 54. Uh, as you know, I like to show you guys everything that's going on. See, there's a light right there. It's not on. There's a light right there. I'm showing you my whole room. I got drapes and everything right there. And I'm just showing you guys what everything is. See, that's the curtain right there. But it's a light back there. But he makes it come over me. So he's just showing himself and, and what he does. And even in my kitchen, and I keep telling you guys, where I be at, there's so much shade that where there's no light that comes in. And the light that y'all see when the cabinets light up and he brings it over me. It's all the way in the back. So uh, it's just him showing himself. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to tell you, we're going to be talking about God. Uh, just just refreshing, rephrasing, getting a better understanding on some things. And I'm hoping that this clears it up uh, with some people that's out there. For number one, uh, I asked my grandkids, I said, how old is God? And they're like, I don't know, Grandma, Google it. How old is God? And I told them, God's timeless. <laughs> yes, he is timeless. You know, our father is timeless. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's the creator of the universe. And we know that, you know, one day I was sitting up here and I was watching a cartoon with my grandkids. And uh, I'm like, man, this show, there's some sneaky information in there because it's like the world came by itself. And so I'm like, oh, Lord, that that is just so... Um, uh, deceiving if our children is watching this and learn this, you know, it's history and it's out of the world, but it doesn't have you. So, you know, I can see how children are easily, um, getting the wrong understanding when we, we just, we just got to be very careful in everything that, uh, our kids watch. But the thing that, you know, why I'm here and we're going to just be refa just refreshing on the word. For one, you know, I asked God, I says, Lord, I said, you know, people are so, manipulate people thinking that they're doing things and it's all you so i'm like you know the beginning with the dinosaurs and all those things he says well who named every animal who i gave i told adam to name every animal so basically he says who's naming every animal i said okay so you know he was like yes in the beginning it was this he says but i always it was a spirit and you know the children always knew what to do where to go what not to be around what was bad what was good even in the caveman days where the dinosaurs was around and, you know, things like that. So when you sit up there, you look at science and it's like, oh, it was water, fish, then man. Then they go, oh, no, it was ape, then man. You know, uh, -uh. it was the creator and he created everything in the heavens and earth. And we give him the glory, the praise, the honor, and thanksgiving for all that he's doing. But the thing is, I was asking, Lord, I said, Lord, I said, you know, what? why is there? I didn't ask him like that and I can't lie. I was just talking to him. And we're talking about uh, priests and uh, Eli and uh, um, uh, Samuel and Aaron and his kids. And, you know, the one thing that we see is that they was always married. Just keeping it real. You know, man bought into that law that um, a priest can't be married, can't have kids, is, is uh, a man's got to be a virgin. And you see how that has been, you know, all over. I'm not, I'm not on the Catholic. I'm not, I'm not trying to single nobody out. I'm just talking about, you know, God never said that a priest could not be married. That was something that man bought into existence. God ain't never said that. God always says, if you cannot control your flesh and desires, get married. And that's because he knew, he knew that the, the flesh was weak. He says, you know, the devil comes in with flesh, fleshly desires. He puts a thought in your mind and he gives it to the flesh. And you know, the thing is, when, when Eve was tempted and then she tempted Adam, we're just keeping it real, but he did it and the covenant was with Adam. And when Adam did that, everybody got knowledge. And I tell you guys, the spirit started to die, but the flesh came to life when they uh, uh, took from the uh, tree of knowledge. And that's just the truth. You know, people sit up there and they put things in where well, a priest can't do this. A person should be holy. And there's only one holy person, holy, holy, holy. And that is Jesus, which we carry the Holy Spirit of the living God in us. And he's given us these instructions. You know, the one thing I always ask, tell you guys is this is the Bible that I read from, the Life Recovery Bible. And uh, this is the one that God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit 
pick for me. When I was in prison, he says, somebody gave me a Bible, and it was really easy. And for some reason, that Bible just left. But the thing that I, I tell you guys is, he says, here, go get this Bible. Because there was a whole bunch of Bibles on a shelf, different versions, different kinds. And he says, this is what I want you to get. When I read from the Life Recovery Bible, it breaks it down. And you know what? We're just going to do a little um, refreshing, rephrasing our mind. Um, like he says, and, and this is this is one that is going to hit, hit some people with like, 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 like a upper, a upper. But God wants you to know the truth. He says, speaking in tongues, he says, an unknown language is a language that he will give you. And he also makes it clear in 1 Corinthians in chapter, uh, chapter 14. That also the languages of the the earth is not the same as this un this un um known language. You understand what I'm saying? You know my brothers and sisters. So the thing is, I'm trying to say is, God made it very clear that the unbelievers won't believe in this language. God is getting y'all the the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, because Jesus is in control right now. But whatever the Father tells him, he does. Jesus is saying, y'all need to read y'all words. If y'all reading the Bible, then you can't understand what you're reading. Go get this Life Recovery Bible. You know, I thank God that he took all my knowledge from me. And he asked me, I was says, well, you know, if you want it, you got it. It's, it's, it's there in you. All that you had is, is back in you. I'm not seeking that. I'm not seeking that. I'm seeking just him. You know, there's a lot of books uh, that people wrote that I want to read. But I'm like, nah, not right now. Because the only understanding that I want is... The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If I need to know something, they'll tell me, and also they'll send me somewhere to hear what I need to hear. Uh, our Father, He is a provider. He makes provisions. He takes care of things before we even think about it, ask about it. It's just like everything that He created on this earth. He knew the, all the things that we would need, so it was here for us. You know, um... God said trust in him. You know, you guys know that my purse came up missing. And you know what? It's just like when I was in the penitentiary. When the Lord told me to uh, go tell them that he's getting ready to clean that prison, the first thing I said is, Lord, do you know where I'm at? I'm in a penitentiary. You want me to tell them that you're getting ready to take all the drugs out of here? <laughs> he said, do you trust me? I said, yes, Lord. And I went out there. I told the inmates. I told the staff members. Hey, this is your brother. The staff members bringing drugs in. Drugs is coming in. And he kept saying, so I'm a showing room. And this. I never knew all the ways that it was coming in. But I told the girls and staff, it's going to be boom, boom, boom. And they found it in uh, the dog food. They found it in the sewing room. And they found it coming in through inmates. So a lot of things that could be donated couldn't be donated no more because that's how, you know, people was bringing the drugs through. They knew exactly what bag to look for. They knew exactly what materials it was coming in. And it was heroin, cocaine, crack, weed, everything was coming in there. And, you know, people know that some of the staff members bringing it in. It's always, but, you know, you got to find the ones who, there's some that's right and some that's not right. And you know what the thing is? God never desired for us to get strung out on drugs. Our God is a God that saves. Our God is a God of provision. Our God is a God of healing. Our God is a God of mercy and grace and love and compassion. And he loves us. And, you know, um, he he's saying, get back into your word. He's telling me the same thing. You know, I sit up there. I have a lot of things to do. And oh, we're going back to trust. As you guys know. I lost my purse. <laughs> and the thing is, I was like, Lord, I don't know if I left um, my keys outside, my purse outside. I always usually put my purse in the same place. Anyway, yesterday, I wasn't tripping on that purse. I said, Lord, I ain't going to be looking for that purse. I said, when that purse meant to be found, and this is what I was thinking, it's going to be found. You know, not once when I had that that thought of maybe somebody got my keys and rekeyed my house. Well, Lord, if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. Today, I said, Lord, where's my purse at? Where is it at? And he said, go behind the bed by the drawer. And I lift, I lift up this bag and it was there. I'm like, I ain't never put my purse over there. But see, sometimes things happen just so you can know where your trust is at. Sometimes God have you put something somewhere and you may forget it. Because see, no matter what, I slept good last night. I wouldn't worry about if somebody's going to come in here. I told you guys, I said, they better worry about the Lord. You know, if they come in here on me and my grandbabies, not once did I sit up there and trip off of 
Where's my keys? Where's my purse? Where's my ID? It's just like, I just didn't worry about it. I just trusted in the Lord. You know what? If, if this money, if it's got to be paid out, it's got to be paid out. You know, if I got to rekey everything, I got to rekey everything. I never worry about if somebody's going to come in and harm me because I trust in the Lord. It's just like when I go to California, I'm not worrying about what's going to happen to me in California. I trust in the Lord. They know that we're coming there, and I said we, not I, that we're going there. We're going there to pray. We're going there to pray off spiritual curses. We're going there to uh, show them love. A lot of people don't know what love is. God gave us a direct order, and his direct order that he told me for all of us, children of God, is to love. That was a direct order. And you could tell that I'm not lying because he gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh, is to love. And I showed you guys over and over and over again. I don't sit under no light. There's a curtain and it don't look nothing like that in my room. But he's showing himself. And I have seen him showing himself like that in other people's room. Like Regina's house. Regina Canada. And she got orange walls. And he just he just lit up the whole room saying, hey, I'm here. She's a child of God. You know, um... She hears the voice of God. And um, the thing is, read your word. If you read your words, and I'm talking to Catholic, I'm talking to you guys, you would see God never put a rule in, in, the, in the Bible saying that y'all couldn't get married. You know, he did say, never call nobody father on earth. Your only father's in heaven. I'm just giving you the word, the scripture. He said to love, love everybody. He said, get religion out of your relationship because religion is going to mess up your relationship with him. You're going to be following all these rules and, and these laws that you can't keep. And if you can't keep them, where do you end up in hell? So we know that we love the Lord wholeheartedly. We are in love with Jesus. We know we love the Holy Spirit, the angels, our brothers and sisters, all the children, and even the ones who don't worship God. We show them the love of Christ. Because we really don't know who's who. Because the thing is, some of us went into so much darkness that it's hard to see the light. You know, people, they seem to light in me always, but I loved. And he's not leaving none of his children behind. He's a God of love. He's a God of provision. He's a God of healing. He's a God of miracles. And, you know, I'm just giving you a praise report on my granddaughter. Uh, she's doing so much better. You know, man counted her out, but Jesus counted her in. As soon as they left, he came. Actually, he was there before he they even got there. He was there when, when, when she died. She He was there when her brother was walking out. He was there holding her the whole time because he was going to keep it real. He was always with her. You know, he was always with her. And I just thank God for him. I thank God for what he's doing for every last one of us. The ones who sitting up there saying we're Christians and we're not believing in all his words. He says all of them, not some of them. He says, don't take, uh, don't add, read the word for what it says. And that's why I told you I should get this life recovery Bible so y'all can have a better understanding instead of getting something that you don't understand what you're reading. Then if you got somebody that's sitting up there following man like a Saul and not following God, when they say something, you can know I don't need to be here. This person is twisting God's words around. God's word says what? He says love. God's words talks about gifts. Ain't nowhere in the word of God where he says, uh, there's, a one, there's one verse where the apostle Paul makes a phrase that uh, they won't be needing prophets no more. That's when Jesus Christ come back. As I, I sit up there and I tell you guys, why would you, why would you think that devil kids could have uh, 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 some knowledge of what's going on or what's getting ready to happen, but he won't give his own kids none. Prophets and prophetess are still around. They're still out there uh, telling, uh, God's telling them what's getting ready to happen. And we all know that something's getting ready to happen, but I always go on what he showed me. You know, I sit up there and I tell you guys, I pray like Moses. You got to look and read your Bible and really truly look in it. It was that one, that one child of God that prayed. God could have took out the whole uh, earth right then and there. Because he was furious. He was even furious at Aaron for when, they, when, when, when Moses was up there on the mountain with him getting the commandments. And then, you know, all the Israelites and Aaron uh, sit up there, got gold. And then what? They threw it into the fire and made a calf. What did Moses do? He ran down there and he prayed. He said, what are you doing, Aaron? Why would you get these people get into your head? You know better than this. 
right there is showing us that it's so easy to be manipulated by people for you to uh, fall into the will of people. But our God says, stand strong, stand firm in his words. Strong and firm. That's what our God tells us to do in the word of God. You know, that's what Apostle Paul says. Stand strong. First Corinthians chapter 10. Start at verse 11. He says, if you're eating from the, the table of the Lord, you can't eat from the table of demons. That means you can't be out there lying, committing adultery, fornicating, masturbating, uh, uh, cuss words. All that's demon. All that's the devil. You know, just because somebody cuss, I ain't calling you no demon, but that is not from the table of the Lord. Read your words, Proverbs, Psalms. All the words that you hear in here, and when you're reading the word of God, you ain't going to never read a cuss word. He's going to tell us what happened, what they did. And these are examples from us. Everything that went on is an example of us for us to know that it's a spiritual world. The spiritual world is more powerful than the physical world. Do you understand what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? Do you understand? Are you comprehending what I'm saying? Get back into your word. Read your word. Ask Jesus to be your teacher. And in Psalms 22, he talks about the assembly and he talks about worshiping. Yes, if two are, are more to, as gather, he's in the midst. But he 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 wants us to come together as one body. That means we're going to go somewhere. We're going to worship together. We're going to have revivals. But it's supposed to be only one teacher. And can't, ain't nobody no, no, no smarter than him, no better than them. And that is Jesus. You know, God's got us in, in different places, so uh, prophets and prophetess, so they can come to where they need to be because his flock is all over. Even some of his flocks in Catholics, some of his flocks in Jehovah Witness. I know that because when they start hearing his voice talking, they, they, they stray away like, wait, wait, I know that voice. I know that voice. I know that voice. They understand when they see the, the nature, but they know when Jesus is talking through the nature. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just giving y'all the real, real. Start reading your word. And on Monday, God's will in the name of Jesus, because you know what? I'm getting ready to go on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, I, I need to talk about that. When I'm out there and uh, I'm with my grandkids, and yeah, my grandkids, no, my grandma stops and prays for people. And they're, they're used to that, because all in Walmart, everywhere we go, they know that I stop and pray for people, and they're used to that. Uh, but my family in California is not used to that. So, uh, I'm asking anybody that looks at my posters when I'm at the beach or our Six Flags, I'm going to always pray for you guys and I'm going to always hug. But the thing is, um, I, I get rare moments with my family. I really do. And, uh, everybody know we're getting ready to go out here. We're getting ready to go to different places. And, um, the thing is that I tell you guys, you know, I get rare moments. I ain't going to even lie. I get, I get, I get rid. Every day is a blessed day to me. Every day is, oh my God, awesome. But I don't get to be with my family that much, especially my daughters. I'm praying that my daughter Trinica could come down there. It's going to be down there with fame and, and legend. But I, 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 I barely see them. My grandkids in California, I barely see my grandson, Anthony, but my grandson, Anthony don't want to see me because he says, you're going to make me go to church. I ain't worried about my grandson Anthony because you know what? He knows God, believe it or not. He don't know it because I never forget what he told me. He says, I don't got to go to church for my mama to be healed. All you got to do is ask now. And I'm looking at it like, you're right. That's true. You know, him going to worship with me is something that I wanted. And uh, I'm just calling him in. That's all I can do is call him into the kingdom of heaven and pray to God that uh, when the devil calls, he won't answer. In the name of Jesus, the same thing I pray over y'all kids, the same thing I pray over my kids, the thing I pray over my grandkids. But see, my kids are in a curse. That's the only way I can say it. Well, I can't say curse. Well, yes, because the curse is still, it's, it's got some residue over it. But the thing is, they hear the voice of God. They love like God wants them to do. Not all of them, the majority of them, because the Holy Spirit just got on me. But I, be, I know that they're coming into the kingdom of heaven. I know that they're going to be doing the will of God because I know, just like I know a lot of y'all kids are. But God also made it clear sometimes when we mix with people that foreigners, not foreigners, devil worshipers, ones that's not right, sometimes our kids end up taking that seed. 
uh, or I don't know how Solomon's wife was, not Solomon, Samuel's wife was, so I don't know why their kids, but it was examples. It was examples. So get back in your word. Start reading your word. And this message is for me too. And just love. His, he said, go out there and love. He said, the love will break the hate. And I'm going to always go by what he shows me because he ain't never lied. And if he showed me and told me, asked me how many kids I'm going to have, I'm going to have it. And love. I love you, Tolato. I can't wait. But you know what? It's all about the Lord. And thank you guys for the ones who uh, asked the Lord for me that I needed to be out there some more because he answers all our prayers and everything's on his timing. Even though I had something to do with my delay, but also uh, the prayers. It's all about God. It's not about me. And I'm his servant. Y'all have a blessed day in the name of Jesus. And once again, I sit under no light. He makes light go over me. <laughs> God bless.